Hey there. In this video, we're going to take a look at one more factor that affects the rate at which water will infiltrate into the ground. This factor is a little bit different than the other ones we've been looking at. Have you ever stopped to think about how very tall trees, like these redwood trees, how they're able to pull water all the way up from their roots all the way up to their leaves? I mean, most of us don't ever stop and think about this, but it's incredible to think about because we know that gravity is trying to pull the water down. Well, how are these trees able to pull it up? They're able to do it by this process or by, actually it's a force. It's called capillarity or capillary action. And what it is, it's a force that opposes gravity. So gravity is trying to pull the water down but this force actually pulls water up. The force of capillarity only occurs when you have very narrow spaces. So in a plant, you have these cells that are microscopic. So they're very, very tiny spaces. In soil, we would be looking at the size of the pores. That would define whether or not the spaces are narrow enough for the water to move up. When you were in elementary school, you may have done a little investigation where you put celery into food coloring. And if you leave it there for a day, what you'll notice is that the leaves will start to turn whatever color the food coloring is. This happens because of capillarity. So the food coloring gets pulled up through the tiny cells of the celery and gets pulled up all the way to the leaves. You can actually do some really cool art projects um, with flowers and plants using this process. So these were white roses. And what they did is they took the stem and they cut it. They sort of put slices in it to have four separate sections. And they stuck each section into a different color food coloring. And the food coloring travels up the stem and you end up with these multicolored flowers. Okay, so this is how plants pull water up. You can see this if you put a piece of paper towel into a cup of water. You'll see the water will actually move up the paper towel because the paper towel has very tiny pores. So capillary action will occur. You also see this when you put a pipette or a straw into liquid. You'll see that the level of the liquid in the straw will be higher than the liquid in the cup because of the capillarity pulls the water up in the narrow space. Okay. So this apparatus is just, it's, it's basically five tubes. The one on the left has the widest opening or the, or the largest diameter. And as we go to the right, the tubes get skinnier and skinnier. You'll notice that in the skinniest tube, the red liquid got pulled up the highest. And as the tubes get wider, the level of the water goes down and down, and there it's the lowest. So this just shows you that the smaller the openings or the smaller the pores, the higher up the water will go. So if we're looking at the rate that water infiltrates, we're looking at the rate that water goes into soil, well, if the pores are very small, some of the water is going to get pulled back up. And so it will infiltrate at a slower rate. Okay, this picture is just a simplified version of what we just looked at. I would like you to draw this in your notes. Okay, I'd like you to have an image like this in your notes. So draw just a dish of water. I want you to put three tubes going into it. Make one very wide. And I want you to show that the water level in there is lower. Make one tube that's a little bit thinner the water levels higher and then make one tube very thin and that one should have the highest water level. Okay, pause the video while you draw. If you've ever done any planting um, and you put one of these pots into water, you'll see the water is pulling itself up the side of the pot. And again, it's called in, uh, capillarity. Sometimes we get some water in our basement and you may notice that water will sometimes move up your basement walls. That's also capillarity. Okay, the stones that are used have very tiny pores. 
So the water will pull itself up. It will oppose gravity and it will go up instead of going down. Okay, so that in a nutshell is capillarity. Uh, what we want to make sure we know is that it happens the most in narrow columns. It happens the least in larger pores. I want to show you one more thing before we end the video. Um, I have four different samples of soil. These show you the size of the grains. Let's say we poured water into each one. Which one would have the slowest rate of infiltration because it would have the most capillarity? Would it be the big one? Would it be the small one? Would it be ones that are in between? Well, based on what we just looked at, water pulls itself up more when there are small pores. So in sample number four, we have the smallest particles. So we have the smallest pores. So this one would have the highest capillarity. Thanks for watching. See you soon.